Welcome to the Fantasy Football Hub YouTube channel. Today, I'm joined by FPL Salah to preview game week 33. Abdul, pleasure to have you back on. Another very solid green arrow for you last week. Coming into the, the real business end now, how are you doing? Are you looking forward to, to the crunch part of the season? I mean, we're already in it, to be fair, but yeah. this is where games really can be made, I feel. Yeah, I mean, look, we've got the big double in game week 34, and then a few weeks later, that's so important to know the season is going to be over. Mm. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to using the final two chips, which is the wild card and, and bench boost. So, I just tell the viewers, what's your, what is your strategy for those chips? Is it is it locked in? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, barring like a total disaster with injuries and stuff, um, it's going to be a wild card 35 and uh, a bench boost in uh, 37. Okay. Let's get into the team straight away. What are your thoughts? Looks pretty good, to be fair. Maybe a slight weakness in defence. I mean, the front the front sort of seven just looks really, really strong. Zabani, Doughty, Taylor is, is your, your third. Is that where you're looking to perhaps improve the team? Yeah, so I've, I've got two free transfers this week. Okay. Um, and I'm happy with my front seven. Um, so I'm not making any transfers there. So it's, it's an obvious defensive transfer I'm going to make this week. And what I'm looking at is either... Doughty to Regulon or Doughty to Guardiol because wow yeah so at the moment I've got as I said I've got two free transfers and I've got nine double gaming players the plan is to have ten double gaming players by thirty four uh so it'll be ten double gaming players plus Erling Haaland um unless I decide to do a minus four and get to Haaland which I, which I doubt but so because I've got three free transfers from now until gaming thirty four that gives me like uh an opportunity this week to take a, like a one week punt okay. Um, so if like if I, if I had enough money to go down to, for example, Virgil Van Dyke, yeah. I would probably do that move, right? Play safe, but because I'm kind of a wee bit strapped for funds, I've got one point two million in the bank, and I've got doubt who's at four point six million. So if I go for a Liverpool defender, it'll be a Canati who I don't really want. I might as well just take a, a punt on you know like a high upside pick like Regulon, who's got Sheffield United at home, or or Guardiol who's got uh, Luton. Uh, and I just say as well though, if I do bring in Guardiol, it will. Only I only bring him in if we get a leak. So I'm not going to be making transfers until Saturday morning. Yeah. The City game is at 3 p.m. We've had a lot of leaks, uh, you know, for the City team this season. So I'm pretty sure we'll get we'll get the team on on Saturday. So I'll be waiting until then. If Guardiola starts, he he might come in or it might be regular. Okay, that's interesting because so what you're saying there is that the player that you're looking to bring in for that third defender spot isn't going to double in. In 34 yeah. but you're still going to play them in that week and you, that's that's okay yeah i mean, I mean look because as I said, i've got nine double gaming players right so i'll have uh i'll have two more transfers to make in, in 34 so the plan is right that we to just say guardiol start so that we to guardiol this week and then uh gaming 34 i have nine double gaming players i'll bring in uh son uh, sorry eze for son and then i'll probably get rid of either taylor yeah i'll do taylor to virgil van dyke uh and that'll give me Ten oh, double okay. gaming players and then a solid bench and you know obviously Erling Haaland. I'm I'm happy to keep Haaland for a single game against Brighton. I think you know that game could well be high scoring. So I mean I've got I mean look even if I get like a one or two injuries, worst case scenario, not worst case scenario, but I would say like a, a bad case scenario would be a minus four, which isn't which isn't the end of the world. And I think right. You know, taking that into consideration, I think it's it's worth taking like a one week punt really uh, for game week thirty three. We've got okay. some good fixtures there to, to attack. Yeah, understand what you're saying. Sorry, I thought you were. I thought that the the player you were bringing in this week was going to play in 34 as well. But this is this yeah. is why I love using using the my team tool because you can just see it so clearly. And yeah, Gavardio isn't in the team, but for for 33 as a one week punt, then yeah, it looks super strong home to Luton. Yeah. If you know he starts, that's yeah, it's one of the best possible fixtures really for a, for a clean sheet potential. Yeah, I mean, looks good. Zabani as well wouldn't play, which is nice. It's just really well set up. Looks strong for, for 34, no doubt about it. What do you think about free hit 34? Just on a more general sort of strategy question, because I feel like people who are free hitting in 34, maybe like are looking at a team like yours and thinking, well, where's my upside here? Because you're not free hitting, but you're, you've are you got, I mean, so many of the players that you'd probably have on, on free hit 34. We'll get into it obviously next week, but just for people this week who are, who, are, who yeah. have that chip in, locked in for the week, like, how different do you really go? I mean, the thing is with that is you can go for like I guess a, a double Arsenal attack with with Havertz. I mean, a, a, instead of double defence, you can go Saka and Havertz. You know, you can possibly even go for, I guess you know instead of Haaland, you go for you know three forwards. Like you know, you probably yeah. go for you know all you know eleven double gaming players. You can probably you probably be looking at something like a Darwin, a Solanke, and a Mateta up front. So th there are a few like um you know ways in which um you know you, they, they can diverge and you know there's there's i'd say maybe one or two players kind of in each position uh you know in, in which they can go for they can go, you know they, they said they can get the 
any Liverpool players they want. You know, we are seeing Trent, Allison, and Jota back in training. Um, we've not had the kind of the official lineup for tonight, but um, you know, if they're on the bench, then they're going to be contentious for game week thirty four. So they they get a, a kind of a, a pick of the you know the, the best assets and to kind of take into consideration as well. You know, any kind of injuries and stuff. So the Liverpool team is an advantage for them, and I, th- I think you know getting your pick of the Arsenal players as well. But saying that, I mean, um, I'm happy to take that on really because I, I think yeah. I've got I've got a good team there. I mean, look, even though a free hitter, just say for example, I'm up against free hitter who has a double Arsenal uh, attack with Havertz and Saka. They've got Virgil Van Dijk. You know, they've got other players that they kind of want. It, it doesn't guarantee that it's going to outscore this team because I've still got ten double gaming players. I've got Haaland, uh, and if the if the free hitters decide to not go with Haaland, that's one player that can really punish them as well. The opportunity is there, but they also need the chips to fall their way, their way as well. Like they need the luck, kind of on you know, in in their favor on that day. Yeah, and oh, yeah, obviously we'll get into it more in in the next episode. But yeah, just talking to a few people, they're looking at as you said, maybe an Arsenal double up in midfield rather than. So, so not they wouldn't really have any benefit to an Arsenal clean sheet at all. It would probably hurt them because yeah. you know the ownership yeah, exactly. over hundred percent. So that, in that in that sense, they're going against the best defense in the league on free hit. You know, it's, yeah, the fixtures aren't great, but I think there is jeopardy there. Anyway, let's let's go back to this week because um, I want to talk to you about captaincy. Now, yeah, as you just mentioned, we're recording this on on Thursday before we've had the the official lineups for the games tonight, the Europa League games, but. Uh, from leaks, it seems as if Salah has been rested. So I think Salah, Diaz, and Bra- well, you guys will know when this comes out. But Salah, Diaz, and Bradley are, are not in the in the first eleven tonight. Darwin is. What do you think that means for Salah's minutes for the for the weekend? And does that make captaincy even closer than it perhaps already is? Yeah, and it's just kind of confirming it's going to be a stressful Saturday morning for me because not only am I going to be waiting for that City news for like you know Guardiola, I'm going to be waiting for Haaland, and then you know deciding on the captaincy as well so yeah definitely I mean like Salah being on the bench you know does his, his minutes wonders for the weekend I mean I think his minutes were already good for Crystal Palace you yeah. know, regardless of who started today but you know, him being on the bench is kind of probably you know solidifies that unless there's some sort of like injury which which I doubt but you know if he's just being rested then you know he's he's probably nailed for 90 minutes you know against uh, Crystal Palace Haaland we just don't know because I mean does he get benched again like you know the second time in three game weeks They've got Real Madrid, you know, it's a three-all game. They've got Real Madrid four days later. Um, I think he'll probably start, but get, you know, come off quite early, maybe, you know, 70 minutes, you know, 70, 75, something like that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the minutes really are in, in Salah's favour, but the fixture is in Haaland's favour. Mm. So that's what makes it really, really close this week. Okay, so so you right now, what are you thinking? Because, I mean, looking at the predicted points... It's very, very close. I don't know what the underlying expected minutes here are of these two players to, to create these predicted points, but Salah with 8.2, Haaland 8.7. No one else really in, in the same boat as them across the, across the game for this week. What are you thinking? I think if both play 90 minutes, I think this week you've got to go for Haaland, but I don't think that'll be the case. You know, Salah's a midfielder. He gets the you know the extra the points for a goal and he's got the much higher assist threat. But that loan fixture is like one of the best fixtures of the season for, for City. Yeah, or, or for any team, you know, looking at home, they got they actually now got the worst expected goals conceded in the league, you know, even worse than wow, Sheffield worse than United. Sheffield United, worse okay. than Sheffield United now, wow. even though they've not conceded you know near as many goals, but you know the the expected goals conceded is is worse now. So so yeah, I mean, look, um, it's it's going to be one of those where it's just going to be one of those. It's kind of like a 50-50 call, both great options. Whichever one you go for, you just have to kind of hope and pray. Okay, yeah, fair enough. All right, let's go. I want to I want to go through position by position and and get a shout from you a player that you think is a good sort of not not necessarily a punt but if you're looking at 33 and 34 just for those sort of oh. weeks the sort of player you you'd be going for just because looking at your goalkeepers they're not ideal right i mean neto in the double i i own neto as well villa away wolves away you're not not predicting that many clean sheets here really but then if you're looking at you know all keepers i'm not quite sure who else you'd go for you you, you don't seem to be thinking about making a transfer on Neto. Would, would you advise selling him if you have the free moves for someone else that's that's doubling in 34 or even this week? I mean, the, the only player, I, the only goalkeeper I'd go for is Alisson right now because oh, right, okay. um, if, if Alisson was fit, just say Keller, you know, if Alisson was fit um, and I could make that move, I'd probably do that. Because uh, I think, you know, obviously the, the Liverpool kind of double, the, the next three for Liverpool are great in, in terms of, you know, the Crystal Palace fixture as well. But yeah, I just, I just think, you know, with the goalkeeper positions, they're just so, I always say this, they're just so random. I mean, Neto will get save points. You know, he could possibly, 
you know, it's like a clean sheet, who knows? But I always think there's more, you know, upside and ha- higher kind of, you know, EV moves to make than, than goalkeeper moves. I think if your team is perfect, you don't have any other moves to make and you've got a weak goalkeeper, then yeah, you know, by all means. But I think there's a lot that most of the time there's going to be a better move to make than a goalkeeper move. Yeah, okay. Agree, agree on that. Um, in terms of the defence, I mean, like your team, it looks pretty much perfect for, for the back line, 434. I guess if you're looking for someone that, that will play, other, other other than these three really, that will play in 33 and then 34 for your team. Eight Nori was one that I was looking at personally, but yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's such an impossible transfer in now without hearing exactly what's going on just because of that that injury news wasn't in full team training it seemed um today or over the last couple of days what, what do you think about him because he's one that you could play in 33 and then has has a double in 34 as well yeah i mean he he, he is an option i thought of uh actually this week but the injury right now has put me off and you yeah. know, especially the fact that he was wasn't in kind of outdoor training but gary o'neill seems to be quite good in his press conferences in terms of you know being honest in terms of you know how how his players are, whether they're injured, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I do think um, we probably will get. You know, I don't know the definitive news, but I think we'll get a fairly good update. But yeah, it's just that fact that he was injured in the last game has put me off. But he's definitely a player. I think if you're looking at a defender for gaming thirty three and thirty four, eight Nuri and Van Dyke are right now are your best options. I think the the two, I'd say the two defenders who've got the highest upside, who have got a good fixture in thirty three and a double in thirty four. So that, that's the two I'd be looking at. Um, the likes of Bradley now, obviously, Trent being back and training, you know, possibly yeah. being the bench tonight. Yeah. Uh, they're just, they're just uh, obviously, they're, they're out of favour now. Let's move on to midfield. I think that picking a player that, if you, if you want to play through 34, I think picking a player that you get in this week and for 34 as well, is quite challenging because the likes of Eze, for example, have a really hard fixture this week. So, I mean, you don't really yeah. want to bring him in for Liverpool away. Obviously, he has that great double. But yeah, first of all, I'll ask you, if you were bringing in a player to play in 33 and 34 in midfield, who would it be? Yeah, so I just, I'd, 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 I'd look at the same teams as in uh, Liverpool and, uh, and and Wolves. I think with Liverpool, I think Diaz would be the best option. Obviously, if you're not, if you're not um, on, the, on the basis that you've already got Mo Salah there. But, yeah. but Diaz is a great option. Even with Jota back in training, I think Diaz's minutes will still be good. I don't think Jota's minutes are going to eat too much into... I think he'll still get two starts or three starts over the next two game weeks. And then Sarabia as well, if you've not got him. I mean, Neto's still out. He's, he's going to be out until May, at least. And um, he he's on penalties as well when Kuna's not on the pitch. So And he's on all set pieces. So they're, they're two options I'd probably bring in. If, um, you know, ideally, for me, the, the, the best the, the best midfielder you know, for th- you know, for thirty three and thirty four is is Luis Diaz. So. Okay, now if you are if you are free hitting thirty four, I just want to ask you about Foden really because I mean, what do you do with him? I think if I think if you're if you're dead ending now and you and you have him, that's really hard whether to know what to do. I was obviously yeah, we're hoping you'd, we'd get a leak, but what if we don't? I mean, who knows? And then yeah. if if you're playing through if if you're free hitting thirty four and you look at you look at City's fixtures and obviously they double in thirty seven and have such a good fixture this week. He'd be the perfect transfer in, and but what do you do now that we don't really know if he's going to play or not? Well, if you're if you're not on a as you said, if you're not on a free hit thirty four, then he's probably like a an easy transfer out. Um, even if you don't get, I, I think his minutes were or his starting kind of uh, berth for Luton was in doubt anyway, even without yeah. the injury, without the knock. Now that he's got that knock, it's like you know, it's it would be you know, I'd say highly illogical of Pep to you know start him in that game. When they've got Madrid a few days later, yeah. So he is probably a sell for those who I think have you know are playing the three free hit in thirty four and need to kind of build towards thirty seven. I I'd say you probably just keep him. I mean, as as we said for the last few weeks, everyone's got a strong front eight. I mean, I'm sure you can. Most players will be able to like bench Foden, you know, this week and you know play like an alternative player, like you know Sarabia or or whoever, like you know like a very the attacker. So yeah, I think for for those you know who are who are free hitting and um and not got a wild card then you probably have to keep because if he is going to be out i mean it's, it's probably just going to be the looting game and not not even now he'll probably just be benched you know he's, he's not it's not like he's gonna, it's unlikely that he's going to miss that game completely um but then obviously you know there is that small risk that you know it is worse than we think and he's out for longer but um right now that doesn't look likely and then finally let's 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 round things off with with forwards um i think i feel like to be fair forwards are kind of picking themselves right now the main question i think I have is is whether to potentially sell Haaland next week. Again, this is probably more of a question for next week because the players that you know he's got a good fixture this week that you you know he's a very good captaincy option. 
Yeah. But it's just if you have that in mind, perhaps with your with transfers this week and next week, if you, if you are dead ending thirty four, would you potentially sell him for a doubler for free? I don't fancy it because look, we've got look at the teams. We've got Wills, right? So we've got Kuna, who's who's all right, but he's just come back from injury. I think he's been in the bench the last few games. His minutes aren't great. Sheffield United, no, I mean their best option is probably Brett and Diaz. You're not yeah. going to take him out for Haaland. And then Liverpool, I think everyone's going to have Darwin, you know, and Haaland. Um, I, I guess if you don't, then you could probably go for you know Haaland to Darwin if you don't if you don't have Darwin already. And then you got Everton, Palace, and Bournemouth, and like again for Bournemouth, everyone's already got Solanke. But then who are you going to get from like Palace? You have got Mateta. But, that's and, the one. That's the one I'm looking at. Is this, is it is it worth going from Haaland to I mean, Mateta I mean, for one week? If if you are going to go for one, then it's it's got to be I think Mateta because Arsenal you don't want to afford from there either. No. Um, Everton you don't you know DCL and Beto are kind of chopping and changing uh, who starts. Um, you know there's they're kind of rotating um, in the front line. So it, it is really Mateta uh, that you go for and like the fixtures are good. Right, they've got West Ham home and Newcastle home, which you know. West Ham are like I think bottom three for expected goals conceded, but you know Haaland's got a good fixture. It's like Brighton yeah. away, Brighton attack. It's more like more more likely that's going to be a high scoring game than a than a cagey affair. So I mean, um, I think if I was on a free hit, like for example, I think I'd risk it because you know it's a one off. You know you, you might as well just go for the you know go all out and, and go for the fifteen double gaming players. But for a transfer, I think it's tougher when you're looking at it as a, a just a single transfer, which you can possibly make you know elsewhere in your team. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. Definitely opportunity cost for, for using that transfer on Haaland. Also, I mean, I don't know what, what sort of price people have paid for Haaland. Obviously, it depends on when you got him in, but you'd be losing uh -huh. a bit of value there as well. Maybe not super, super important, but it depends how many, you know, what you're going to do with the team moving forward. But it's always better to have more money than than less. Yeah, so, um, always. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah, of course. That's probably the most obvious thing I've ever said ever, but yeah, there you go. Okay, I think that's going to do it, my friend. Anything else that we might have missed? I mean, a quick question about who you're starting this week in goal, actually. Because uh -huh. both your keepers have the same predicted points. It's a pretty niche question just for you. But there'll be some some Neto Dubravka owners out there. Dubravka as well is one that did really well last week. But again, a seemingly tough fixture. Do you just play him? Um, I think I'll go for Neto because okay. look at the odds, right? Net, like, uh, Bournemouth are actually favourites in that game against United. Are they really? Uh, wow. Yeah, I was quite shocked. Um, and I was quite shocked that Solanke is at 44% to score at any time as well. Wow. Uh, just on a bit of a side note. But the the clean sheet odds kind of favour Bournemouth, you know, by 3%. So Bournemouth are 20% and Newcastle, you know, 17 Okay. Um, I guess, I, I don't, I think it's a close. I think, I think obviously probably both teams will probably score, United and, and Spurs, right? But I just yeah. think um, with this one, when it's close, I'll just go with the clean sheet odds. And, you know, Neto has the save points as well. So I'll, I'll go with that. But yeah, it's, it's a close one, but I, I don't think there'll be much in it. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, thank you very much, my friend. Uh, that is going to do it for this one. Good luck this game week. I'm not sure if there's going to be time, it will, depending on the leaks. I don't know if there's going to be time for you to you, you to post on, on the site for your, your team reveal. What do you reckon? Yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll update the website with my kind of proposed moves. Yeah. But then uh, obviously the, the final team will, will, will be on my Twitter uh, before the deadline. Okay. Everybody wants to kind of uh, keep up with it. Yeah. Twitter's on screen as always. Thank you, my friend. Good luck this game week and um, good luck to all of you guys as well.